Hello and welcome to another Big 3 Rumble. In this video, I'll be going over the best fights of the Big 3, but only be looking into the manga version of these fights. So the anime is completely off the table in this battle. I might down the line make a best anime fight, but for now, let's get started with our last episode's winner, Naruto. I just wanted to state this now, but due to the amount of fights that are in all these series, I won't be going over them in full detail. Just a quick overview and a few important points to the fight. Let's get started with Naruto vs Pain. This fight starts on chapter 430 and ends on chapter 442. We start off the fight with Naruto arriving at the Hidden Leaf Village after it's already been almighty pushed away. Then the way the fight begins is crazy, Naruto one-shotting one of the paths of pain. Then we see Naruto use the Rasen Shuriken again, but this time he throws it and expands it. Damn that is cool. We get some fighting between the Toads and the Pain Summons. As the fight goes on, we see Naruto going in and out of Sage Mode due to him burning through it. I mean, he is fighting all the Pains after all. We get Naruto pinned to the ground and getting Tok no Jutsu'd by Pain. Hinata comes and confesses her loves and gets bodied. This pushes the fight to Pain versus the Nine Tails. Man, look at that Six Tails panel. It looks so good. They both just go all out pushing each other to the point where planetary devastation in the eight tail form comes out. Naruto is able to go back into the stage mode thanks to Minato's interference and go back to fighting Pain yet again. Then what happens next is just beautiful. Naruto is able to trick Pain into using Almighty Push to stop the swarm of Naruto just for Naruto to withstand it and finish Pain off with the classic Rasengan. Beautiful finish with amazing panels to accompany the fight. Now we get to the sibling death battle, Sasuke vs Itachi. This fight starts on chapter 384 and ends on chapter 393. This fight I think has been something we've always been wanting to see since the beginning of Naruto. Both Sasuke and Itachi start throwing hands, looking like it's back and forth fight just for us to see Itachi drop the rawest hand gesture in all of Naruto. What a badass. Then for us to just see as the viewers that the fight has never even started and it's just been a genjutsu fight the entire time. We still see incredible panels like Itachi saying Sasuke will be his new light and the shuriken battle that they have shortly after. Super action packed and it's just the beginning. It isn't until Sasuke breaks out of Tsukiyomi that the fight really starts to ramp up. Clashes of fireball jutsu and Itachi using Amaterasu on Sasuke, forcing him to retreat and getting Kirin ready to be used. Sasuke uses Kirin on Itachi, but Itachi survives due to Susano. Orochimaru unleashes his power out of Sasuke, but Itachi seals it away with the Susano blade shortly after, leaving the two brothers left. Itachi approaches Sasuke, both extremely exhausted, but Itachi is the one to die and Sasuke is the winner. A hyped up match that lived up to the expectation, but also exceeds them with the narrative afterwards that puts even more story into that fight alone. I know this fight may not be as hyped as the last two, but I do think it is a great fight nonetheless. Shikamaru vs Hidan might not be as explosive, but I think it's definitely a smart fight that was completely one-sided in my opinion. This fight starts off in chapter 332 and ends at 339. It starts off with the new Team 10 being created and finding a plan to hunt down Hidan and Kakasu. Shikamaru ambushes them and is able to land the Shadow Possession Jutsu on both of them. Shikamaru tries to get Hidan to attack Kakazu, but Kakazu ends up freeing himself from the Shadow Possession Jutsu. Shoji tries to do a surprise attack on Kakazu, but he hardens himself. Yet, right when he thinks he's okay, Kakashi impales him with a lightning blade from behind. Kakashi only got one of Kakazu's hearts, so he gets up and kicks Kakashi away. Then this moment, Shikamaru's possession breaks off of Hidan. A little back and forth, but Shikamaru attempts to get Hidan in a shadow possession jutsu again, moving him back with a shadow and kunai. Thinking that Shikamaru was only going to play it safe by attacking from a distance, not realizing that he was in close quarters, landing a single punch on Hidan, which enables the Shadow Possession Jutsu to connect. After the connection is made, Shikamaru separates from the rest of Team 10 to handle Hidan. Now, with them alone in the forest, Shikamaru covers the area in letter bombs and wires. After a little bit, Shikamaru's Shadow Possession stops again, allowing Hidan to attack Shikamaru. It looks like at this moment, Hidan cuts Shikamaru and has what he needs to perform his ritual. Hidan Don stabs himself in the chest and Shikamaru looks like he is dead but fakes it because it's all going according to plan. To have Hidan take out one of the hearts of Kakazu and lower his own guard. Shikamaru gets Hidan all wrapped up in letter bomb and wire and lights up a cigarette for Asuma Sensei with his lighter. Just to throw the same cigarette to ignite the letter bomb 
Plus, the speech right before covering the hole was so badass. A hype revenge fight that was so clean without being flashy at all. Now for my final pick will be Naruto vs Sasuke in their final battle and starts on chapter 694 and ends on chapter 698. This fight I felt was what the series was leading to from the very beginning. Naruto and Sasuke go back to Final Valley to finish this fight. They talk about their ideals one more time then spring into action. Sasuke fires a fireball jutsu and Naruto but Naruto goes into 6 pass stage mode immediately to stop it. Seeing Sasuke switch places with one of the truth seeking orbs was just so clean. Then they go into a kaiju battle being Susano versus Kurama avatar mode. Sasuke pulls out all the other tail beasts and uses their chakra to power himself up. They keep throwing hands and pushing each other even further. Tail beast bombs and lightning Susano arrows being thrown just shows the insane scale of the battle. Then for it to happen again but Naruto using the Razan shuriken and one that looks like it's mixed with a tail beast bomb. I could be wrong but it looks insane nonetheless. That clash sends them both back to the ground on their last legs pushing every ounce of fight that they have left just beating each other over and over again sasuke takes the nine tails chakra that kurama was trying to give to naruto to use a final chidori on naruto but sasuke doesn't have enough chakra to keep the sharingan active so naruto takes advantage of that and lands a punch on him this is where it comes to both of them just using their last jutsus Naruto with his Rasengan and Sasuke with his Amaterasu Chidori. This fight ends with Naruto, the victor, and both losing their arms. I think it was just a beautiful climax to the first manga I have ever read. Now we can only have one fight to represent each series, so I'll be going with Naruto vs Pain. I picked this fight because it had so much heart and hype behind it. The transformations and abilities were just beautiful. So much is going on to engage you throughout the entire fight. Even the speech in the middle felt very engaging as well. It also shows the best aspects of Naruto from beginning to end. Now we move on to Bleach where we can start with Aizen vs Ichigo. This fight starts on chapter 417 and ends on chapter 421. Ichigo comes out the Dangai a whole different person. After sensing that his family is still alive, he grabs Aizen by the face and takes him somewhere where they can both fight. Like look at this paneling, how expressive it is and how powerful it is. I'm just gonna say this, but Kubo's use of white space is just so well done, so beautiful, really adds to these panels. Aizen and Ichigo clash just start cutting mountains, Ichigo stopping Aizen Blade with this hand was such an insane cool moment, a sweet clapback from Aizen stealing his theme, in anger Aizen uses Hado number 90 to lock Ichigo in a black coffin, only for him to swipe it away like a tinder profile. Aizen continues to further evolve and look at that panel man, look how crazy Aizen looks. Ichigo goes into his final Getsuga Tensho form, again look at that panel. Then to see the scale of the attack in all black, Aizen and Ichigo look like they're out of power, Aizen is sealed bringing the fight to a close. Next we have the head captain versus Jesus Christ himself. This fight starts off with chapter 506 and it finishes off at chapter 511. Yamamoto wastes no time in striking Yuha and then instantly goes into his Bankai which is such a raw panel. Seeing the raw power of the point of his sword then going into the next part of his Bankai that surrounds himself in a cloak of flame. Launching into the fight again we see Yuha try to protect himself from the head captain's attack just for Yamamoto to raise the dead and another part of his Bankai. Yuha charges the head captain out of anger and is cut down, but it is revealed to be a fake all along. Yamamoto tries to activate his Bankai yet again and it is stolen instantly and he is cut down. He does have a little bit of life left in him gripping onto Yuha and then is completely obliterated, ending the fight right there. Next we have the captain of the Zero Division versus Yuha. This fight starts on chapter 605 and ends on chapter 611. We start with Yuha making it to the royal palace and Ichibe drawing a line saying where he will defeat Yuha and Yuha saying that he'll defeat him three steps before that line. Fight starts and a hand pushes Yuha away and Yuha counters it by shooting arrows at himself pushing him back up. Their swords begin to clash and Ishibe cuts Yuha's name in half, giving him only half of his current power. Yuha returns his power to himself and Ichibe releases his Shikai power, throwing black ink in the area that he swings at. Everything covered in black loses its name and with white ink Ichibe is able to give new names to those things, giving Yuha the property of a black ant. Thinking that he's won, Ichibe slams Yuha back just for Yuha to come back and unveil the power of the Almighty. 
Ichibe says that he'll kill Yuha and he won't be able to be reborn. Yet Yuha has seen everything due to the Almighty and just completely blows up Ichibe, killing him three steps where he said he would die, ending the fight right there. Finally, we have Ichigo vs. Grimjow. This fight starts on chapter 279 and ends on chapter 286. Both the fighters get fully healed and now are ready to fight. Close quarter sword clashing with Sero being shot. Grimjow egging on Ichigo, telling him to get serious, clashing and pushing Ichigo back. Grimjow taunts Ichigo, telling him where his killer intent is. It gets like a ten show and Sero clash, allowing Grimjow to find an opening to find a Grand Ray Sero to get Ichigo to finally don his hollow mask. Without a moment to waste, Grimjow releases his resurrection form. Looking like a wild cool design, Grimjow attacked Ichigo with rapid attack. Ichigo is able to land a point blank Getsuka Tensho. More blows are being exchanged and it looks like Ichigo has Grimjow on the ropes until he tanks five of those spikes in order to save Orohime. Now Ichigo is the one being pushed back, not until the power of Orohime telling him not to die does Ichigo just catch Grimjow's attack with his bare fucking hands and land the clean strike. Both reaching their limit, Grimjow pulls out his final attack. Ichigo is able to shatter the first one, and Grimjow finally throws the last one. Ichigo is also able to shatter through that one, being able to land the final blow of the fight. For my pick, I'll be going with Grimjow versus Ichigo. I just love close fights. I'm not really a big fan of one-sided stomps. I enjoy a narrative of both these characters and really enjoyed Grimjow's development as a character. Both wanted to be strong, but for completely different reasons. Not to mention that the action was great and it was a very close fight in my opinion. Now for One Piece, I'll start with Zoro versus King. I'm not really going to go into all the chapters chapter due to how many breaks there is in between each fight when it comes to One Piece. So I'll just start where Zoro and King are outside the dome together. Zoro and Sanji exchange words about Zoro putting him down if he isn't himself after the fight. Then the fight really starts to ramp up. In his pterodactyl form, King is keeping a distance and speed against Zoro. Zoro tries to counter with a great dragon twister but it's blocked. King goes back into his normal form and continues to fight Zoro. Enma looks like it's sucking Zoro dry of his energy due to him having his back against the wall. After regaining control, Zoro hits King with an attack but still no damage yet again. Zoro continues to struggle wielding Enma but finally begins to understand what it takes in order to wield such a sword, living up to the expectation that is needed to wield the sword. Zoro is able to finally land a blow on King and in doing so reveal what King is. They fight and clash once more, admitting that they have been reaching their limit. Clashing and trading blows with one another, King releases his final attack and Zoro does as well. I love this panel. It looks amazing and it's filled with so much style. Zoro becomes King of Hell with his victory over King. Now to Luffy vs Doflamingo. This fight kind of started with Law and Luffy, but we're going to start with the super hype panel where Luffy stopped Dolphy from stepping on Law. My god was it so hyped and got me really excited for this fight to begin. We have them both clashing with Conqueror's Hockey, close combat punches and attacks are being thrown out, trading punches and really seeing the impact of each swing. Luffy is able to get Law to safety and Dolphy is just keeping up with Luffy, sending him flying with each attack and not letting up. Luffy is trying his best to land a clean shot but Dolphy is finding too many openings and just when we thought it looking dire for Luffy, he pulls out Gear 4. At this point, it's not even close. Luffy is swinging so hard at Dofi and he's taking a real big beating. After landing a bazooka on Dofi, Luffy needs to regain his strength to get back into gear 4 again. Everyone's able to stall long enough for Luffy or Lucy at this moment to regain his hockey. Dofi showing off his awakening devil fruit but Luffy pushed back and is able to activate gear 4 again. Luffy goes up and launches a beautiful Kong gun on Dofi ending the fight right there. Now for our last fight, Luffy vs Katakuri. This fight really doesn't start until Luffy drags Katakuri with him into the mirror world. Luffy smashes the entrance and it's the fight really begins to start. Luffy tries to hit Katakuri but Katakuri just shows how much more superior he is to Luffy at this moment, dodging his attacks and even countering them with much stronger versions of his own attacks. They both have similar power but Katakuri is definitely a league above him. Luffy is getting really beaten but even though he's trying to relay a message to crew destroy every mirror on the ship, 
Katakuri takes out a Triton and continues to take on Luffy. Also showing Luffy that Katakuri's Devil Fruit has awakened. Even though Luffy isn't landing any blows, it seems like he's capable of dodging Katakuri's attacks at this moment. Katakuri takes a break from trapping Luffy in a bunch of mochi. After freeing himself, he challenged Katakuri yet again and is able to see his true face. In the heat of the moment, it looks like Katakuri's emotions take the best of him, allowing Luffy to land a kick. Luffy is able to change the gear 4 and land another blow on Katakuri. Luffy is able to keep up this barrage of attacks, slowly understanding how to defeat Katakuri, but he regains his cool and is able to dodge and land a blow on Luffy. Luffy runs out of gear 4 and is forced to escape from the mirror world. Luffy returns and starts the fight again. Luffy starts to be able to dodge Katakuri's attacks as well, but not on the same level, trying to train his observation hockey, but Katakuri is able to land a critical blow on Luffy. Katakuri finds out that he was able to land a blow due to his sister's interference. Katakuri stabs himself in a way of evening out the playing field. Both of them begin to fight, forcing each other closer and closer to the limit. Luffy slowly develops his observation hockey. Luffy then goes into gear for Snake Man, attempting to end the fight here, hitting Katakuri with so many fast punches. They both get ready to clash with their final attack. King Cobra versus Dice Mochi. After the dust has settled, they both pass out, but Luffy gets back up, but Katakuri gets back up just as well. But he falls back in defeat, ending the fight there. Now I have to make a final decision on what fight One Piece to be represented in this Big 3 Rumble, and I pick Luffy versus Katakuri. This fight was very long, but I felt like it had so much heart and back and forth, and it was just a good fight overall. I saw both of them exceeding their limits for people that they cared about. We move on to the rankings, and coming in bronze is Grim Jow versus Ichigo. I felt like this fight was enjoyable with two different types of fighters, one protecting and one to prove themselves. I felt like there, during the fight there was a true struggle between Ichigo and Grim Jow, and there was a little bit of respect there as well. I do think there is a few parts that kind of make this fight a little bit low for me. First would be Grim Jow attacking Orihime, forcing Ichigo to tank those spikes. I understand that Grim Jow wants an edge over Ichigo, but I feel like he also wanted to push Ichigo, but this wasn't the way to achieve it. It caused Ichigo to take free hits. It felt like he really wanted to beat Ichigo, but he wanted to do it with his power alone. I could be wrong, but I feel like this brings it down a little bit for me. Then we have the very hype moment where Ichigo catches Grim Jow's attack with his bare hand. I understand that this is so hype, but after the hype has settled, I don't understand how he could pull this off. Like, he was being pushed back the entire time, but when Orihime calls him out, he gets a buff and is able to stop that attack. It just threw me out of the fight a little bit for a second. I still think that it was really entertaining fights within the manga, really strong impact frames, fast pacing, and beautiful paneling. Next coming in silver is Naruto vs Pain. I really think this fight was narratively very satisfying. Naruto arriving on the battlefield and one-shotting a path of pain is just so cool. Seeing him implement throwing Razen Shuriken for the first time and expanding it was insane. The frames of Naruto going into Six Tails form was a core memory to me when I read it. The bones surrounding what is said to be the fourth tail transformation was just beautiful. The fight was very fast paced, seeing how each of them learned how to counter each other, Naruto doing his best to block off multiple points of vision with the Renegon, it was just very impressive. This fight had every possible technique that could be used within this fight. Pain was pushed back, Naruto learning about the time limit of his almighty push was just so great. Then to conclude with a fight with Shadow Clone and a simple Rasengan was icing on the cake. The paneling was gorgeous. To see the first planetary devastation when the Ninetail break out of it, it was just great art. I do love the more emotional parts of this fight, like Hinata coming in to try to help Naruto and Minato seeing his son for the first time. This all really wrapped up and elevated this fight to greater heights. The balance of action and the heart is what keeps this fight so memorable to this day. Now for our winner, it is Katakuri vs Luffy. I was really shocked when I first read this fight. I didn't expect to have so many layers to it that really elevated it. Both characters are fighting for motives that I can get behind. Luffy trying to protect his crew and Katakuri protecting his family. You see this seemingly unstoppable opponent, Katakuri, that Luffy needs to beat. No one has ever been able to see him drop on his back. 
seeing this insane gap in power compared to Luffy was just jarring. Like, I truly believe that Luffy had no chance in the world. It isn't until we see Katakuri's true face that we see the cracks in this perfect character. Luffy begins to adapt and learn. Both are being pushed past their limits over and over again, reaching greater heights, and on top of that, so much respect for each other as warriors. Katakuri inflicting self-damage to make even to Luffy. Luffy even stated that he wants to beat Katakuri all 1 billion berries worth is such a strong way to get me captivated in both these characters. Yet after all the traded blows and the new techniques, my favorite part of this fight is the ending. Katakuri stands up one last time asking Luffy, Someday will you come back here and defeat Big Mom? Luffy replies with, Of course, I am the man who will be the Pirate King. Katakuri responds with, You are looking pretty far into the future, then falls on his back, this scene alone was the perfect wrap to the entire fight, showing and admitting to Luffy, you won in this action alone. The shock on Luffy's face says it all. Finally, we have Luffy leaving a hat over Katakuri's face to protect his true face from being seen while he's passed out. Both fighters respect each other, but most importantly, understood each other until the very end. I can't wait for these characters to meet up again once again. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. It took me a while because I had to go back and read a lot of these fights and make sure that the memory of these fights weren't influenced by the anime at all. I wanted to remember the paneling, the pacing as best I could. I would love to hear your opinions in the comments below. I do love engaging with you all and understanding your viewpoints. If you have any suggestions for the next Big 3 Rumble, please leave a comment below. And if I use it, I'll give you credit in the next Big 3 Rumble. With that being said, thank you once more. I am your bestest bro, and I'll see you when I see you.